I think uh, Iman really put it in perspective by giving a practical example. I think I'm going to try the same thing. I do have some principles on which Catholic uh, migration theory rests, and uh, we'll end with that. But maybe more concretely, behind me is the United Nations. On the other side of the East River is Brooklyn and Queens, or my diocese is. The United Nations tries to bring people together. And Brooklyn and Queens, they live together. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, there are 4.8 million people there, more than half of the city of New York. And uh, it's bigger than some countries. I know it's bigger than Ireland, because I was in Ireland once. They asked, how many people in your diocese? I said, 4.8 million. We only have 4.4. <laughs> so it's big enough to be a country. All right, Two airports, too. Uh, plus a uh, sea of ports. So what happens there? Wh who are all these 4.8 million people? Half of whom are immigrants. Some refugees are there. Not so many refugees because it's too expensive to live in New York as a refugee. You come as an immigrant. You come to join family members. Probably 1 million Jews there of every persuasion. Probably 300,000 Arabic speaking people, most uh, Muslims. Uh, Hindus. Last Saturday I had to take the nuncio from the talk that we were giving in our diocese to Penn Station and we were stuck with the Sikh parade coming down, although not Hindus, but there are a variety. So where do these people come from? The nuncio said, I said Queens, and that's where they are, because everybody lives in neighborhoods. I won't say ghettos. They're not self-informed, there's no fences, there's no barriers. People join together because they have commonality of language, of religion, and to buy their fruits and vegetables and everything else they eat. You need the stores. This is what brings people together. And I think we have to look at the practicality that Roman and Queens could be a nation state because there's some, something that binds them together. First of all, nobody <coughs> likes Manhattan, the rest of it. Brooklyn and Queens are unique. They're not so great paired together in the diocese. I always have to say the diocese in Brooklyn and Queens because the people in Queens get offended that it's the diocese of Brooklyn. Uh, so it is a, a unique thing. Every Sunday we have mass in 29 different languages. Clearly, the Catholic Church believes that that language is constituent of culture, constituent of, of religion. We, do, we don't want to destroy that. It is possible for people with different characteristics to be joined together, certainly in a church and certainly in a nation, as it happens. In general, there's peace over there. I don't see and haven't seen any uh, ethnic battles, or big problems. There may be individual people once in a while, but I think 9-11 showed us clearly that we lived in peace. There could have been a terrible reaction at that time. It didn't happen, thank God. Uh, I think it tells us something that people living with one another understand one another. And this is the problem of nationalism. It happens when there is ignorance of others. Clearly that becomes the problem. Or again, uh, Professor did a great job of lay laying out all those definitions of principles. So we see once the, the, the people are afraid of something, they don't want to change the culture of this nation. The fact of the matter is, this nation is not one nation. We know that. There was once a map I saw of all the, I think there was 11 nations in the United States. You have the East Coast and the West Coast and all those things in the middle. And the things in the middle, those square states, are where the problem is, my friends. <laughs> because they don't have the experience that we do on the East and the West Coast. This international, I forgot the half a million Chinese in Brooklyn and Queens, half a million Chinese, 495,000 according to the census. This is complete diversity. The world is over there. Every nation has a representative, if not more than a, a lot. So the issue is, again, bringing people together to understand one another, to work together, either in religion or in uh, neighborhoods, or inter-ethnic uh, uh, responsibilities and relationships. Before I left uh, today in the office, I had to sign 15 letters that were going to the Buddhists because there's some feast coming up at the Holy <coughs> See um, set, set had a document and we sent it to them. I do the same thing, of course, with the Jewish holidays. Uh, for the Arabs uh, and the Muslims, we, 
we join together in the, at the end of the, the, the Ramadan and they get a letter. The Hindus, the same thing. So there is a tremendous amount of interchange, all of which binds people together and makes them understand that nationalism can be a bad thing. It can go against the symbol of unity. The United Nations behind us tries to bring the world together, tries. Many good things are happening. A lot of things that we can't get people to agree to make it happen. The ideas are there. There's tremendous working, a lot of efforts going on, especially in migration, which is one of the key problems that we're facing in the world today because the world is a globalized world. We can no longer rely only on the nation state concept that will keep the world together because the inner conflicts are there. We need to look beyond the national borders. Uh, you know, fences are good sometimes. Uh, fences are bad when they keep people from uh, moving out. Uh, and fences sometimes can be good when, when they're trying to keep people in. Uh, and that's when they're bad. You know, remember the Berlin Wall. Why did we tear it down? Because people were stuck. They couldn't leave. Uh, so this becomes the, the issue. You know, is it good or is it bad? Uh, whose nation is it? Uh, from the Catholic principles, which I think uh, enunciate, we have the, the issue, and the first one would be persons have the right to leave, find opportunities in their homeland, first of all, but also they have the right to migrate to support themselves and their families. Seemingly contradictory, but it is the common good of the nation that where the people are and where they, they wish to, to go. The common good. Can a nation accept people from another place when they're fleeing conflict, uh, where there's uh, poverty, where all of the issues that, that cause migration are there? We have to, to balance the, the two uh, goods. It's good to have a, a, a boundary, but it's also more important that that boundary will be porous to those who need to come across it. Um, the third principle is sovereign nations have the right to control their borders. I don't think we can uh, dispute that, but again, the principle of the common good is what should determine uh, control of the border means. There should be some, some kind of a logical, lawful entry in, in, into countries. Uh, we, it's hard to, de to debate that, but at the same time, where's the compassion? Where's the the openness to up to others. Our own situation in the United States has certainly been uh, where the large amount of undocumented people are here because of economic reasons, uh, because this country needed the labor. We looked the other way. We did not enforce our own laws because these people were integrated into the into the nation. They were they're working. They're workers. They're undocumented workers. I always make the, the comparison, if you go to Paris, you see migrants, you see them on the streets, you see them on the, on the, on the subway grates. Uh, if you come to New York, you don't see migrants there. You may see some homeless people, but you don't see the migrants. They're integrated. There's a whole big different dynamic that happens in this, in this ability of the United States, and we have all of the 70 problems, and today our political system is not not favoring this kind of integration, which naturally does happen. The, the proof is the nation state there across the, the river. It does work. It can work with people. If we don't put people against one another. Um, clearly, uh, the other fourth principle, refugees and asylum seekers should be afforded protection. This is international law. This the church has taught. Certainly, right after the Second World War, the first great encyclical on migration by Pius XII said that. You had the, the dissolution of the nation states of Europe after the Second World War. People were displaced all over the place. They spoke to that, that people needed to have the ability to move, to find a new life, to find new countries, uh, to, to work on that. So we constantly uh, supported that principle. And finally, there's a principle that human dignity, human rights, uh, are the, the real foundation of why we respect people. It's really the dignity of the human person. Uh, that's clearly the beginning of Catholic morality when it comes to understanding the issues of, of migration. Uh, we can't get around that. Every, every person has an innate uh, uh, dignity that we need to respect. 
and uh, no one uh, should be really uh, excluded from the, the world in which they live what, because that's not being respected. One other principle that comes from uh, the teaching of, of Pope Paul, he's, it was a difficult one to understand. He said that there is a universal destination of human goods. That means whatever we have doesn't belong to us alone. It belongs to the world, you know? Uh, there was a, one, one quote from uh, uh, Dorothy Day said, you know, if you have two coats, you probably stole one from the, the homeless person that didn't have one. You really pulled it from them. You're a thief because you have two and somebody else needs it. Well, you know, that's very, very deep, very uh, ethical, very uh, religious. But again, that's, if we don't start with those kind of principles, where are we going to end up? With, with the exclusion of people who are desperately looking for uh, some asylum, uh, with uh, n the putting people one against the other, uh, by, uh, and also by destroying families. So uh, I'm sure there'll be questions, but I, I thought maybe making a little bit practical that the nation state is not evil in itself. Nationalism can be when it's used in the wrong way. Our immigration history has been replete with it starting with the Chinese Exclusion Act, the 1924 Act that was against all the Southern Eastern Europeans, favoring the, the, uh, the Northern and Western Europeans, uh, the 65 Act that finally opened things up, and then the regression we've seen since 1965 with uh, restrict, restrictions that really uh, are not, not going to help us as a, as a nation. Again, I'm saying uh, the experience of internationalism, of people living and working together, is what the world needs because then we see things differently. Thank you.